Hello everyone. Um, so I'm sure many of you, like myself, are stuck indoors and looking for stuff to do. So um, whether you're homeschooling your kids um, or you're just insanely bored and looking for something to pass the time, um, or maybe this is something you've always wanted to try but never known how, uh, I'm going to teach you today how to transform your bedroom into a camera obscura uh, and then take that one step further and show you how to transform your bathroom into a dark room and then how to make pictures with the camera obscura and develop them in the dark room. Um, most of this is stuff that you should have, uh, the stuff that you'll need for this is stuff that you'll have lying around the house. The dark room bit, there are a few sort of specialist chemicals that you need, but I'll um, see if I can post links to that or something and you, you be you'll be able to buy them all online. Um, and yeah, let's see how it goes. I've never done one of these videos before, so um, if it's a bit rambly and rubbish, then apologies in advance. Let's see how we get on. Um, so to start with, um, you just need a room. Um, we're going to use my daughter's room today because uh, she's off at the park with mum. Uh, and this is the view outside, not the most exciting view in the world, but um, it's uh, it'll do for our purposes. Um, so first thing we need to do is black out this space and turn this room pitch black. The first thing we need is uh, some material to black out the room. Uh, I always use cardboard um, just because it's really easy to get hold of and reusable. Uh, but you can also use tin foil works really well or blackout material. Um, but cardboard and gaffer tape is my go to. I'm going to use cardboard for the bedroom and I'm going to use tin foil for the dark room um, just to show you how both work. So you cut your cardboard to size. This I've already um, cut to fit into this space. Uh, and then we're going to tape this in. So I've got my cardboard cut to size and wedged into the space and now I need to seal up these leaks um, with the light leaks coming through um, with, I'm going to use gaffer tape. Uh, if you don't have gaffer tape lying around then you could just use extra bits of cardboard and use tape or masking tape to sort of cover these gaps but as long as there's no light coming through you'll be fine. That's our room all blacked out and if I turn the lights off we're in the dark. Okay so now we need to put a lens in the window. Um, normally when I'm making camera obscuras, I use big process lenses like these, but it's probably not the sort of thing most of you will have lying around the house. And if you do, then, well, you probably don't need to watch this video. Um, so we're going to play with a few um, other kinds of lenses that you should or might have lying around the house. And if not, you can order online for pounds, you know, pennies even. Um, so let's have a look at what we're going to use. Okay, so the lenses that we're going to play around with today are... Magnifying glasses, so this is one from, I think that came from Poundland actually, uh, and another one that's a bit smaller, but um, we'll, so, so we can kind of compare the difference. Uh, this is just a lens out of a normal 35mm camera, um, so I'll show you what happens when you put one of them in. This is a lens from an enlarger, uh, that's another 35mm lens. Uh, this is a lens from a pair of glasses, it's really scratched and rubbish because I found it on the floor, um, but we'll see what happens when we use that. Uh, and then this is a lens from a pair of 3D glasses that I got from when I went to see Star Wars. Um, I've not actually tried these before, um, so we'll see what happens when we put that in. You'll need to cut your hole for your lens to go in. Uh, we're obviously trying a bunch of different ones, so I've cut a bunch of different holes here. Um, and then we're just going to tape them into place. It's worth pointing out, actually, that you, you don't really need a lens at all. You could just create a pinhole. Um, this is obviously a bit larger than a pinhole. This is just to sort of to show you the camera's not going to pick it up if it's too small. Um, but you can have different size holes in your window, and that will still project an image into your room. So you can kind of see the tops of the, um, uh, of the buildings opposite me here um, projected in. Obviously, it's super blurry, and that's the great thing about using a lens. It sharpens that image. Okay, so here's all our lenses in place, um, and we'll see what each of them do. There's our magnifying glass in place. Uh, if I go and turn the lights out. Um, and now all I need to do is pull up a screen in front of it, and we can see outside projected in. This thing I'm using is a is a reflector. I use it in um, for photography to bounce light off things, basically. But you can use any old material. Um, this is translucent, which is great, so you can kind of see it from both sides. So here's me around the front. You can see the lens there, uh, and obviously from around the back. Tracing paper works the same, but if you don't have one of these or tracing paper, you can just use a piece of um, white card. Uh, I'm just trying to find. 
So let me get this in place. So this is just a white piece of cardboard, white paper, anything white basically, and your image will be projected onto it. Okay, so I'll show you the other lenses now and what they do. This is the condenser lens from an enlarger. It still projects an image, not quite as big an image circle. This, this screen has to be a lot closer. I'm only about six inches away here, um, so you don't get quite as big an image, but still works. Okay, now we've got a um, 50 mil lens from a 35 mil camera. Um, and this one focuses super, super close. It's this tiny little image circle. I won't go into details now about like what, what the different lenses do and why and focal lengths and image circles and stuff like that. It gets a bit nerdy, maybe another time. Um, but I just wanted to show what different lenses that you should have, you might have lying around will do. So that's a 50 mil. And this is a 24 mil. So this just has a wider angle of view. So this is the lens from a pair of glasses that I found on the street. Um, so if I pull back and pull up my screen, we can see outside projected in again. Um, it's super blurry and like low quality, but it's a lens that I found on the street. It's all scratched up, so I wasn't expecting much difference. And this is the lens from the 3D glasses. Yeah, this is super blurry. You can't see huge much, but I mean, you can see the view. You can make out the outside in, um, but yeah, I wasn't expecting much from that. But it's fun to try these things. And finally, here's the smaller of the two magnifying glasses. Um, so if I pull up the screen here, we'll see a slightly smaller image circle. Um, that red there, that's the brick from the windowsill. Um, you can see the edge of the house come into frame. But um, yeah, as a, as a general rule, the larger the diameter of the, of the lens, um, the bigger the image circle, generally speaking. There we go. Whether you've got a condenser lens from an old and larger, uh, a lens from any camera, 35mm, medium format, large format camera, it will all work. Magnifying glass, just a lens from a pair of glasses, some 3D glasses didn't work so well, um, but still worked a bit. And uh, that was where the smaller magnifying glass was. Um, oops. Um, yeah, it'll all work. So we're going to focus in though on using the bigger magnifying glass. And it's that simple, we've just made a camera obscura. Black out a room, chuck a lens in the window, find something for the image to project onto, like a screen like this, or a sheet of cardboard, um, paper, tracing paper, as I mentioned, um, material, you could hang a sheet, uh, muslin works well, um, anything that's white, basically, um, the image will project onto. If it's translucent, uh, you can see it from both sides. Um, if it's transparent, um, it won't work because the light will just go straight through it. Um, and that's it. So now we're going to move on to actually making images with the um, camera obscura. Uh, the main way we're going to do that is with um, traditional black and white um, darkroom processing. Um, but before I do that, I just want to mention, if you're not interested in doing that, you don't have the chemicals or the time, the resources, whatever, or you're just not bothered, um, then do bear in mind or remember that you can, you set up your screen um, to capture the view from outside uh, and you could just set up a digital camera, use your phone or any old digital camera, basically put on a tripod and then photograph that scene. Obviously it's super blurry because that's all the lenses pointing at the same time. Um, but yeah, and then you can crop that and flip it and play around with it on any um, digital editing software. But we're going to set up a darkroom now. Okay, so now we're in the bathroom and this is going to be the darkroom. You, you could set up the darkroom in the same space as your um, camera obscura, um, obviously the room's already dark, but obviously if it's a bedroom, you've got carpets and things like that, just be careful about chemical splashing. I'm gonna use the bathroom just because it's a bit safer and easier to work in. Um, so we just need to now black out this space, um, and this time we're gonna use tinfoil. And this is cool. Ooh. Oh, trippy. Uh, anyway, sorry, let's go. Okay, great thing about tinfoil, is it will, you don't need any tape for it. So you just need to wet the window a bit first, so dampen the, um, the glass, and then just 
stick it into place. So here we have our room blacked out. If I shut the door, it's pretty good. There's a few little leaks and stuff here. I can I can fix them up a little bit as we go, but and a little bit doesn't matter too much. Um, right, so now our dark room is dark. Now we're gonna set up the chemistry. Um, we're gonna have developer, stop, fix, and this will just be water. Um, I use, use Ilford, uh, multi-grade developer, stop and fix, um, but there's loads of other um, black and white chemistry suppliers out there, photo speed, technol, and probably a whole bunch more. Um, I'll maybe try and put some links in this somehow, uh, I'll have to work that out, um, but you just Google black and white developing kits and just the main things you need is developer and fixer and stop if it comes with it but don't worry too much about that. Okay so I've mixed up the chemicals. Um, I'm not going to go into loads of detail here about how to mix up darkroom chemistry mainly because there's so many um, a lot more succinct and better tutorials out there already on YouTube and stuff um, that I could do. Um, but really simply uh, I've got in there 500 ml of developer. Um, it's a one to nine solution. So you put 50 milliliters of developer and 450 milliliters of water. Stop bath, which is just water with a splash of stop. Um, you should, you meant to measure it, but I just put a splash in. Um, and fixer, that's a one to four solution. So that's got 100 milliliters of fix and 400 milliliters of water. And then that's just a water bath at the end. Couple of quick things before I forget. Tin foil, don't leave this up too long. If you leave that up there for like, I don't know, a day or so, um, it'll stick to the window, it'll dry, and it's a nightmare to get off. So just as soon as you're done, take it down. It's all right for like, you know, 12 hours or something like that. You should be fine. Just a quick health and safety note. Um, these chemicals are toxic. It's fine if you get them on your hands a little bit. Just wash them afterwards. Some people have, um, very rarely have an allergic reaction to them. But if you do um, have any irritation of the skin or anything like that, then, um, uh, I don't know, seek medical advice um, or stop doing what you're doing. Um, but you can use, um, I'm using tongs. Um, you can use rubber gloves or surgical gloves or anything like that just to get it, stop it getting on your fingers. But, but it's fine. I mean, don't drink it. Um, but if it gets around a little bit, it's fine. I'm doing this in the bath um, to reduce the amount of mess and it's easy to wash down um but you know if you're doing it anywhere as long as you put some sheets down or some cardboard or something like that you'll be fine don't worry too much oh another thing really quick um i said right at the beginning that this would all be stuff with the exception of the chemicals that you should have lying around the house obviously i'm using darkroom trays here um but you don't have to you could use um anything that will hold the paper you know and some liquid um, like you can buy those like tin, tin foily tray things to do your like roasting, you know, sort of one use things. Like this. Any kind of tray or bath or anything that will hold liquid will do the job basically. Um, don't use anything that you're going to use for cooking. Um, obviously you can wash it afterwards, but I wouldn't, I don't want to advise anyone to do that. Okay, so our dark room is almost set up. We've got it blacked out. Uh, we've got our chemistry set up. Um, now all we need is our safe lights. That's the red light. Um, you can buy um, proper safe lights um, from darkroom suppliers. Um, we don't need one of them. We just need one of these head torch with a red light on it. Great thing about this, obviously, wherever you look, um, you can see what you're looking at. Um, now, obviously, you might not have one of these lying around the house. So a couple of other options. Um, Red, this is um, sort of gels for sort of, um, uh, for event lighting, I think. I kind of got a roll of it left over from something or other. Um, and you could put this um, over your light source in the room. This stuff, be careful, this light is quite hot. And um, depending on what lights we use, what lights there are in the room, don't go putting a bit of plastic over a light that gets really hot because it will melt and, and burn. So please, please do be careful. Um, but this kind of thing, and you could put this over a torch um, or a lamp or over the, you know, if you've got a, um, on your phone, put it over the torch on your phone. Um, so that'll work. Uh, or you could use like a reflector thing. This is just off a bike that again could go over, 
um, a light source of some sort. Uh, if you haven't got something like that, you could just use, I mean, this will work even. This is just like the lid off a, um, I don't know, what's that, polish or something. Um, and again, if I put that over the light in the room, you can see everything goes red. There's another one over there which would black out. Um, so that's another option. Um, but basically you just need a re the room to be red. Um, obviously this isn't like proper um, kind of dark room process. Um, we're cutting lots of corners, we're bodging it, but you know, that's part of the fun and experimenting here. Um, but strongly advise these if you can get one. Okay, so I'm back in my daughter's room, but um, we're actually gonna move rooms. One of the reasons for that is the sun is now coming around the back of the house and coming, pointing through this room. Point out there, you can see the sun in the sky, which means the thing that we're looking at is in the shadow and the sun's beating right through the lens, um, which isn't ideal, basically. So we're gonna tear this off. And um, we're gonna go through the house. And into the front room. And you can see here that the sun is now shining onto the buildings opposite. So as a general rule, you want the sun. So think about what room you're gonna be using in the house and what time of day. Um, and ideally you want the sun to be pointing at your subject and not into the lens. Okay, so we've moved through to the box junk room at the front of the house. Uh, we've blacked this one out as well. Uh, and there's a view out there across the street. So, if I turn the lights out in here, yeah, we're all blacked out. So, if we pull the screen up like we did before, you can see outside projected in. Bring this closer, you can see a bit more detail. The next thing we need to do is find something to hold the paper in place. So this next bit then is where we're actually going to make the images. So we're going to expose straight onto photographic paper. Now um, we need something to keep that in place basically. So that's going to sort of be here in, in place of the screen basically. We can't, the screen can't hold the paper because we need to hold that. So we need to kind of place something, a board, um, in front of the lens that can hold our paper. Normally I've got various different kind of, um, I used magnetic whiteboards and various frames and things that I've built sort of specially for these kind of purposes. But as I said before, um, we're gonna use stuff that we can find lying around the house. So we're gonna see if we can find something that will do the job. And this will do. Okay, so what I've done is I've brought in this um, shelving unit thing and to the front of it, I've just taped a bit of board just to give us a bit of height. Um, I could have just projected it straight onto the white of the frame, but it was a bit low down, so I wanted to give myself a bit more height. So we can see here how light from the lens projects onto here. And then all we'll need to do in a moment is tape our piece of photographic paper, just using masking tape, onto here to make an exposure. But we've got a few more things to do first. I just made a quick lens cap just by getting a piece of cardboard and just taping it over the lens so we can lift and close that when we want to. A quick thing on focusing. Um, so currently the window here is just about in focus. Um, and basically the further away something is from the lens, the closer the screen needs to be to the lens. So the horizon, um, when that's in focus, if you want to move closer, so for instance, let's we want to focus on these tree or the branches of this tree. If I move this away, so I'm just pushing this away, and we should see branches of the tree start to come into focus and the windows in the background go out of focus. We've got the tree in focus there, um, but obviously the rest of the image is pretty blurry because it's got a really shallow depth of field, this magnifying glass lens. Now, if we wanted to increase the depth of field, i.e. have more in focus, um, we would we can just make a smaller aperture. So just to show you what that looks like, I'm just gonna put a, just a bit of cardboard with a hole in it. 
um, if you look at the picture here, so with, without, with, without, with, without. So you can see the depth of field increasing with the smaller hole. Obviously the image gets darker, so you need a longer shutter speed. Um, now, obviously, most lenses will have a um, an aperture in them that you can make bigger or smaller, but this is just a way of kind of creating that yourself. Now we're all set up. Um, we need our box of photographic paper. Uh, we're going to tape that to this board here uh, and make an exposure. Lights off. Safe light on. I've placed my photographic paper here on the board and I've made a sort of mark where I wanted the, the frame, uh, the paper to be. I'm using the 8 by 10 inch paper. Um, so now, I'm making exposure. Um, and I totally guessed that exposure. Um, I just went for like half a second um, as a... Uh, as a first attempt, um, we'll see how we get on basically. I'll talk through like testing and stuff like that a little bit more in a minute. So I'm boxing that up, putting it in its box, and now we can head across the hall to the dock. Okay, so here's my print going into the developer, and we'll see what happens. Through. Overexposed. The picture, as you can see in the tray just there, uh, is completely black, which means it's um, overexposed. Um, so we can do one of two things. We can either reduce the shutter speed, so lift the lens up, uh, the lens cap up um, uh, quickly, like that. But I think that's probably going to be, uh, it was quite quick anyway. So for me to do that super fast, it's going to be difficult. So the other thing, of course, I can do is reduce the aperture. So I'll use that piece of cardboard that I had with a hole in it to make a smaller aperture. Less light will come through. It will give us a bigger depth of field, um, but we should hopefully get a better exposure. Here's my bit of cardboard uh, with a slightly smaller hole in it. Uh, the more precise and round the hole is, the, the better, really. But I've just done it quickly, so just to show you. So let's try a shorter exposure. Another thing you can use to um, reduce your aperture is you obviously the cardboard thing, but also one of these, quite handy. Uh, it's a spaghetti measurer. Um, that works quite well. Okay, take two. That's a bit better. This picture's now been through the developer stock and it's now in the fix, which means we can turn the lights on and have a look. And there is our paper negative. It's come up pretty well. Just rinsing the print now. And here is our negative. But yeah, that's pretty good exposure. Um, now we need to turn that into a positive print because that's obviously our paper negative. Um, before we do that quickly, um, obviously um, I just kind of guessed the exposure first time. It will all depend on how the size of your lens, the type of the lens, how bright it is outside, to some extent the paper that you're using. Although as a rule, um, photographic paper has an ISO of about three. Um, sensible things to do would have been use smaller strips of paper to do a sort of test trim so you're not wasting bigger sheets. 
Um, and you can always, I mean, there's multiple ways you can kind of test and, and, and um, uh, you know, to test your exposure times and test strips and things like that. Um, if you're confused or I've rushed through any of that, feel free to email me or message me through Instagram or whatever and um, I'll see if I can help. To make the positive, we need to be back in the dark. Uh, we need our photo paper. Okay, so to make the contact print, we need to get a fresh piece of photographic paper. We place this down on the floor, emulsion side, shiny side up. We get our paper negative. And we place the negative on top of the other sheet of paper face down and then we give it a wipe, get a bit of tissue and give it a wipe. Okay, so these two bits of paper are now squashed together. Um, I just got a bit of tissue and um, kind of squidgied them together. This helps get out any air bubbles and just creates a nice contact between the two, um, the negative and the um, fresh piece of paper. And then I use this. And so all I was using there is using a uh, torch off another iPhone um, to expose it. Take our fresh bit of paper, put it into the developer, put it into the wash, and keep our fingers crossed. So I just did 10 second exposure there. Um, again, you should you should test properly. That was just kind of from experience. I've done this a bunch of times. It sort of felt like it's a good place to start from. So here is our image coming through. That's the positive in the fix. We can have a look at it now. positive and negative images. And here is our positive print. bad for some gaffer tape, cardboard, tinfoil, one pound magnifying glass and a few trace chemicals. Do you like the picture? Mm. <laughs> Obviously today I just took a picture of the view um, outside of the window um, but if you had a ground floor room you could stand someone out in front of the lens and make their portrait uh, or you could build something in front of the lens, create a still life um, or obviously, you know, go ahead and just photograph um, what, what you see, the nicer your view, probably the better the image might be. Um, but loads of ability to experiment with the depth of field, the frame where you actually place the picture, place the paper within the frame so you can select different views. You could use different size papers, bigger and smaller. Um, lots of options available. And that's it. Um, how to turn your bedroom into a camera obscura and your bathroom into a dark room in order to take pictures like these. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if uh, any of this doesn't make sense, then please feel free to reach out and um, ask me any questions. Uh, let me know if, it, if it's any good. Um, I quite enjoy doing it myself, so I've got plenty of time on my hands, so I might try and do a few more of these. So if there's anything in particular people want to know about, let me know. Um, yeah, that's it for me. Uh, stay safe out there. See you later, bye.